Meta level should be 125, here is why. Hey guys, Oro here, and today I'm gonna talk about the Elden Ring PvP meta level and why I think it should be 125. Uh, if you trust my opinion and you don't wanna hear the reasoning behind everything, you can just level up your character to 125, place your sign down at the Rey Lucaria main academy gate, and I'll whoop your ass later. But for <laughs> That's pretty good. But you never should do that. Like, relying on someone's word like hey trust me bro it's, it's just bad approach For now we're gonna get right into the thick of it first off before we start i need to clarify some things the pvp meta level is meant for dueling and nothing else not invasions not pve not where your character level ended up after your first playthrough not for a 70 int spell that you feel the need to use all of these things are completely irrelevant and if you think they are, you're missing the point of the PvP meta. I think I am not missing the point of PvP meta. Every single PvP meta in the game was serving the purpose of increasing the player's pool. The game is not competitive. It is not competitive type of the game. This is not Valorant. This is not CSGO. This is not League of Legends. You have to make a sacrifice for the sake of PvE players so they have easy entry into the world of PvP. If you are going to put level meta on, for example, 100, when the average player is finishing the game on 140, you are excluding such player from the PvP until the moment that they are going to make specifically made character. It is bad. It's not supposed to be thing. The entry to the world of the PvP is supposed to be smooth. You are finishing the game, you are leveling up plenty of more levels, and you are able to compete against people that play on the meta level. If that's not going to be the case, it is going to be detrimental to the game as the entry barrier to the world of dueling is going to be so high that people just not gonna enter, or like very little amount of people gonna enter. And the old players that used to play duels before, at some point they are gonna burn out, they are going to stop playing the game. There will be no influx of new players, the old players gonna be leaving, and essentially you are killing the dueling community by doing so. Either the community gonna be very small, and very, let's call it, elitist, or you are just you know, going to completely kill it. You need to take PvE players into consideration when you are talking about level meta. Furthermore, it was always the case. In Dark Souls 1, we ended up with the level of 135 as the soul level meta. At the end of the day, before it was 120, when the release of the uh, PC happened, it was 100 because of the arenas or to be exact, I think even 99, 199, something like that. The point is that when you finish the game in Dark Souls 1, you usually had around like that 100 level, like 90, 100 and so on. Sometimes like if you was farming a little bit higher. But the dwelling meta, which was later at the given time, 125, well, you needed to spend some additional time to level up to this level. You couldn't miss it accidentally or, well, you could, but there was way less of a chance that you are going to miss the so level PvP meta by accident if you are new to the game. Similar story with Dark Souls 3. Because in Dark Souls 3 was finishing, without the DLCs, you are finishing the game on around like 90, 100, something like that. And then on 120, you have dwelling meta. So people just can level up to that 120 and freely participate. So yeah, that's pretty good. I'm not taking into consideration Dark Souls 2, because Dark Souls 2 was completely messed because of the soul memory. At some point we had like soul level meta of 150, and until the very moment when uh, From Software introduced uh, soul level priority matchmaking in the arena, it was only for the sake of to keep the balance in the game. But still, even still, Level 150 was fine because you used to finish the game before that, when the DLCs were not released yet. So it's absolutely fine. People still were finishing at like 110, 20, something like that. And they, they, they could simply level up to that 150. Everything was working just fine. Now, like the idea of, hey, we are going to play PvP on 125, 
when people finish the game on like 140, 50, it's just, well, you're forcing the new players to play through the PvE again. And on top of that, this game is fucking long. It is not that easy to make the new build. You have to collect a lot of shit. The entry barrier is fucking huge because of that. It is it is not fun to, to have like so level meta set like that. You are excluding like simply players out of playing the game in the PvP environment. The PvP meta is designed to be a perfect stopping point where multiple balance builds can exist for dueling each other in PvP. Meta itself as the definition it's something that in an eyes of the certain group of people might be considered as something best. It's like very simplified definition, yes? But it might be essentially, you know, the... Um, it, you, might, you might give it... You might give the meta like meaning for many different things, even within the same game. You might have level meta, you might have build meta, you might have a particular, uh, particular weapon class or like shield class meta. You might have many type of metas. It is not like that, it's the, the, the level meta is generally speaking for the sake like the fact you, you maintaining the perfect balance in the stats doesn't mean that it is actually the best thing for the game to have that particular particular level it's always like depends on the opinion if we are talking about like perhaps competitive meta yeah competitive meta level suggested level for the competitive play maybe that's true but this game is micro tiny on the competitive scene and like no i'm sorry this game has no competitive scene yet maybe it is going to have but following, uh, following Dark Souls 3, it was such a micro thing. It's the perfectly balanced level where you can't have too much of everything, but still have to make some important decisions about your build. I've actually done a lot of theory crafting and ended leveling up multiple characters to try out a bunch of different metas for myself, uh, namely 100, 125, and 150. Uh, and 125 was easily the best out of all of them for multiple different reasons that I'm going to get into. Yeah, I kind of wants to hear this reasoning because as for now as far as i see there is a lot of the hard counters in this game and you need a lot of tools and these tools require stats i think there is that old school type of the approach from dark souls games where you want to make people not use everything but it is really not like valid point because you might have stats that allows you to use every single tool in the game or almost every single tool in the game, but you are not going to be able to utilize it because your damage is going to be shit. You are not going to have high enough stats. Uh, for example, I don't know, you are not going to be able to perhaps uh, utilize the proper build compositions and so on and so forth. Some people want a lower level meta to push for more build variety. But in actuality, going lower does the exact opposite. It makes pure builds way too strong and it kills casters and hybrids as they simply don't have enough stats to compete below 125. I am confused a little bit. Can, can we repeat? The first argument is you don't want people to be super fucking Captain America type of powerful guys that can do everything. That's, that's the first reasoning. And the second reasoning is what? That like, okay, but optimized builds for one particular stat is bad too. What's the point then, again? Like, I, I kind of don't understand the, the, the idea behind it. Any, anyone like on the chat like get it? Because it's it right now it doesn't sound like a decent argumentation, more like, hey, I just want to find the reason to say that 125 is a sweet spot. How does lower make pure builds stronger? Uh, well, technically because you have to sacrifice other stats for one stat to actually receive. I, I have no idea. Cause 50 dex build on uh, level 100 will stomp like half fast uh, hybrid builds, but it is going to be the same on 125. Hybrid builds are trash. 
overall like no matter what you would probably if you want a good hybrid build you, you are not going 150 you're going 300 you, you cannot really optimize stats that well i have seen scott's video where he was showing like the uh, planner and he oh look i have still three stats i have still three three stats it, it it doesn't work like that this game okay maybe maybe to make things clear this game doesn't have the same approach to the pvp like the other games you are not rocking one build and you are fine with that no you are swapping shit tons of stuff because for an example you have the fingerprint okay someone has let's say that someone has fingerprint and the poker you're like okay so my counter to it is uh the dragon bolt you are using the dragon bolt uh, blessing and then you essentially have the soft counter you can compete otherwise you cannot compete then the other player for the sake of to compete with you has to use the lightning weapon and you're swapping around like that you need like different stats for the sake to make the things viable otherwise well you just would have only one build viable which would be fingerprint with the status effects all casters and hybrids as they simply don't have enough stats to compete below 125. a lot of other people have been clamoring for a higher level meta including myself until recently now the main reasoning behind this push for higher levels is that soft caps are much higher than they have been in previous games, uh, namely damage stats scaling all the way up to 80. Ever since Demon Souls, the very first Souls game, people have been reaching the soft caps for at least one damage stat and having enough stats left over for plenty of health, stamina, and whatever else they need. Uh, unfortunately for Elden Ring, it, it's just not that simple. Here are my main reasons for not going higher than 125. Okay, so think about the uh, soft caps real quick. You don't really have to go above like 50. You like basically you have plenty of soft, soft caps, yeah? One is on, for example, 50, other one is on 80. Then you have 99 is, is the hard cap, yeah? You don't have to go all the way up to, nine, uh, to, to 80. There is no need to do that. So that, that one is absolutely fine. This is true. Yeah, I mean, you have to play carefully in this game for the sake of to not get one shotted. Because there, there are things that one shot. Although your regular like a weapon swings do not one shot at all. They are dealing like if you have optimized setup, you are receiving the damage in the ammo of 300, 400. You have 2k HP. It is not. It is like normal. The time to kill like with the normal attacks is well regular. Let's call it that way. It's not like insanely high. Yeah. On top of that. Uh, when it comes to the weapon arts that deal like shit tons of, of damage and so on and so forth. Well, that's that's sure they do exist, but well, you cannot really if you want to if you want to have lower time to kill, you have to go with the lower level. On 125, people do deal fucking 1700 damage to each other if they are going to buff their weapon with the resolve. Or yeah, this knight's resolve, I think it's called weapon art, and, and they're gonna apply bleed on it with the seppuku, you are going to get fucking 1700 damage in one shot. That being said, those are like a gimmicks, yeah? You can play around them, you, you can play around them with the spacing and so on. This is how this game is, you have to play around that, yeah? You can just, to be honest, play it out with very simple way. Just pick up the fingerprint shield, start fucking poking and you're beating guy like that. <laughs> like there is counter to that and then like the other player can get that dragon bolt and then they have counter to the other thingy and then like the, the other player has to take the lightning weapon and then when the other player gonna take the lightning weapon then uh, another player has to play passively on the long range because they cannot trade and then they swap in for the for example bloodhound step and then you have like battle of the nutrition and this is how it's actually going around it's like to be honest when it comes to level it is like that you have you have like particular level that is the limit for example in the tournaments and it is up to the players to kind of find the optimal setup that is going to help them win and uh, to be honest level has nothing to do with that like on 125 you one shot people on 150 you one shot people if you are going to use the correct setup and going higher will only make this problem worse as people hit 60 vigor and have more damage without any trade-offs. Fights ending in one or two hits is not fun or balanced at all. But this, yeah, exactly. Like on 125, you have the exactly same story. You finish the fight in, in fact, like when you're leveling up, you are also like receiving the additional defenses. And someone has to actually bring the calculator and count it up. Because I am not sure if people that have higher levels are just their defensive game is 
not actually stronger than, than their offensive game. Someone have to fucking sit and count it. Because it's not exactly my be like that. It's not having higher level doesn't mean you're gonna one shot another higher level. Number two, poise is dumb. Stacking poise is insanely strong in this game. What is what is problem with stacking poise? Wait. Okay. Poise allows you to ignore weapon stun at certain breakpoints, and stacking enough of it allows you to tank through most attacks in the game. Players going past 125 aren't going to level damage stats or get a little more vigor. They're going to bump endurance and they're going to get max poise on every single build, including pure casters. You are no fucking way you can do that. You're going to fucking lose heart if you're going to do it. There is so many weapons in this game that literally fucking deal 130 plus freaking poise damage with particular attacks 130 is around the max that you can get usually if you are playing on 150 and you would you would want to actually do something like that uh, you're probably gonna just fucking slow walk and gonna have to use the bloodhound step for the mobility which makes you quite vulnerable it's no it's really it's it's not that bad it's the poise is the very important stat and on the competitive level always was look at dark souls fucking one it is very important you have passive poise you have to play around it you have to stack like a 116 for example for the sake of to uh to to poise through the 100 air 2 running attack of the heavy thrusting sword that's like shit tons of poise. And this is only like a 100 attack with this weapon. It's very good that you can stack that much poise against such type of the attack because this attack is very fucking strong. It actually allows the players to stall the fight and just like do the poke fucking running attack game. There is really nothing bad about it that you can have that much poise. It is fine, in fact. If you actually bother, if you are, if you are so bothering about the uh, high amount of the poise, uh, then just play the great sword with the uh, crouch attacks. It deals in two hands 131 plus damage, poise damage that is per hit. It cannot be parried. It is relatively good tool. The problem is that it's getting hard countered by sh by shields, but this is. This is what I told you already. I mean, maybe not shields. It is hard countered by uh, barricade shield. But then, like, barricade got nerfed. Right now, it's only seven seconds. You can play around it, like, for in way better manner than you could before. You have to be flexible on the high-level PvP. That's that's the thingy. Like, you, you cannot just be like, oh, uh, we are essentially lowering the level because you can stack the poise because uh, my dual katana cannot stagger the guy that has a lot of poise. Like, what is that thinking, Kevin? This means that Havel monsters, aka bull goats in this game, will reign supreme. And duels will become a horrible, unfun trade fest. You have like the most powerful running attacks ever since Dark Souls 2 in this game. Holy fuck. Someone lost his sanity, I would say. Poise is one of the most important stats uh, in this game. It is straight up up to kind of, you know, build making for the sake of to optimize ammo out of it. You cannot like just, oh... Poise is dumb because it kills many weapons because they do not enough poise damage. If they do not enough poise damage, you either do not use them. No one forces you to use particular weapons. Maybe like it's up to certain approach of the players. If you have like tournament at the level meta, for example, 150, let's say, yeah. And the, in the rules there will be that you cannot stack above certain amount of the poise, then you are safe. That's it. Like, you know, it's, it's really limiting thinking of it in the way that in on 125 you can still stack shit tons of poise. You can make vast majority of the weak weapons irrelevant. And it's fine because these weapons are weak. They do not supposed to be used if you want to be efficient. But yeah, it's you do not supposed to use freaking shitty weapons and then complain, oh, mega garbage, lots of poise, dude. Like, it's your fucking choice that you are using shitty weapons. Just go with something else.
man, like, you have so many choices in this game. Like, you have, like, so many spells that are viable. That's status effects and so on. Uh, you going, like, full turtle and you're being fucking cancer. And then, like, you, you, you can play around it, apparently, with the, uh, with, with the Dragon Bolt. And then, like, you might actually play with uh, Dual Naginata and try to outspace people with the with the L1s, uh, you have like, you know, uh, possibility to use the madness spell and un uh, spells unlocked and then try to catch people by that. Number three, endurance is way less important. Is it though? Many setups require shit tons of the stamina overall, and this this point kind of contradicting with the second point as well, because our humans like stamina is way less important. Then it is true, but at the same time, it's like having more stamina is very comfortable and sometimes wins the fights. He probably meant you don't need to increase it over 20, right? I guess like maybe that's the case, but like these stamina points are very useful. The stamina investment doesn't pay out because in this game. I think it's actually quite important, to be honest. Like, I think, like, having on 20... Uh, I think having, like, 20, 20 stamina, I mean, 20 end endurance points for the, fake, uh, for the sake of the uh, soft, cap, soft cap stamina might be quite uh, inefficient sometimes. That's out of my empirical experience, though. Yeah, endurance means you can stack poise, but you don't need poise like you needed stamina in previous games. Because they got rid of the two-hit R1 combos in PvP, the stamina from leveling endurance just isn't necessary anymore. And lastly, number four, you can- Dude, in this game, you are constantly applying the pressure of the running attacks. It's not like, okay, you, you don't have like a two-hit combos, but you have different strategies that requires you to actually be constantly in the fight. Yes, like, the, the two-hit combos are gone, but regular L1 with two Naginatas takes definitely more stamina than your Pontiff to hit combo in Dark Souls 3. The difference though is the fact that, uh, well, it, it's different game. It's, this, this, this argument should be like only partially relevant. You're playing this game differently. Can't have everything. At 125, there's a perfect balance of stats that allow you to get 60 vigor, enough levels for the damage stat of your choosing, and still have plenty of levels left over. Here are some examples of standard 125 builds I put together that you guys can try out for yourselves. Okay, let's see. Uh, let's see that. Four builds out of them instant lose in highly competitive PvP. Just because they are being absolutely dominated by fingerprint. It is like instant lose. For these builds, just statistically losing instantly. Because they do not have the tool that allows you for the sake to actually stand a ground against fingerprint. Then arcane might stand a chance because you can uh, fight the battle of nutrition with the status effects. And like, that's about it. So yeah, that just about covers everything on why I believe 125 is the best level meta for PvP. And if you guys are looking for the best place to duel, it's at the Rhea Lucaria main academy gate. Place your red sign down or use a remedy to grab someone else's. Good luck and have fun. Thanks again so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to the channel for more Elden Ring PvP coming soon. And I'll see you in the lands between. Well, uh, Otto asked to subscribe. So I'm linking you guys his channel and this video so you can subscribe. Because yeah, like, you know, like uh, this video is like his, it is his opinion. Yeah, that being said, like he is good content creator. However, this Discord is built on having competitive environment and we believe going above 25 will hurt that competitive aspect. I think we're supposed to have actual practical tests, just tournaments on different levels to actually bring up the uh, correct conclusions. And like they might be actually right that it might hurt competitive aspects, but I do believe like it is worth to, to hurt a little bit the competitive aspect of the game for the sake of so casual players might have access to the competitive community at all. How many tournaments? Uh, I mean, like it doesn't matter how many tournaments or about a one or not. You know, it's it, like even though even if Arabora would be the worst player in the world, which he isn't. In fact, like you know. Ouroboros, a lot of people gives him shit, but like, it's like, he's, he's just like not participi pa participating much in the competitive play. If he would, he probably just would be pretty good overall as a player. He just like, he doesn't have to do that because competitive fucking play in, 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 in Dark Souls games overall is partially a meme. I don't know if someone perhaps, 
after I am going to release this particular video could perhaps make the answer, make the response video and maybe there is like some sort of the blatant uh, logical fallacy that I am doing. Then just, well, just, just explain why. Just tell me why I would technically be in the logical fallacy. Because yeah, maybe I'm just wrong. Maybe really like 125 is such a good fucking sweet, po sweet spot and everything else is just not, not that fucking great. Like the other sweet spots are either too low or too high. 